put these decorations out on the lawn at Christmas. This time I thought it'd be a little more ambitious. <laughs> oh. It's a wonderful red green Christmas. And now here he is, the cordial and fuzzy guy who comes off your roof. My uncle, your hero, Stin Hero, red green. appreciate it and all the best of the holiday season to each and every one of you. This is our very first Christmas special. I'd like to apologize first of all for being so crass as to take advantage of the whole Christmas thing and I'd also like to apologize for taking so darn long to think of it. <laughs> you know Uncle Ray, I really don't think you have to apologize for being insensitive. People have come to expect that of you by now. <laughs> I'm sure you, I'm sure you know my nephew, Harold, or as his parents call him, the ghost of Christmas past. <laughs> I just think it's so cool. It's yeah. so cool. We're oh, getting yeah. like a Christmas special. Yeah. It's so cool. <laughs> Not a lot of outdoor shows get a Christmas special. No, that's right. No. You know, the Sports Network did a couple. Trolling for presents. <laughs> and uh, the other one was uh, Frosty the Cold One. <laughs> Well, we're not here to talk about other people's mistakes. No. We've got lots of our own to show. That's right. So you just sit back and lower your standards. You'll have a happier Christmas, and it'll make this a better show. <laughs> it's time to play the Possum Lodge word game, and today Mr. Mike Hammer gets to play for the opportunity to go to France. <laughs> yes! All expenses are paid. All you have to do is stick out your thumb. <laughs> you're thinking, and yes, the return ticket is included. <laughs> All right, Mr. Hammer. Uncle Red, you have 30 seconds to get Mr. Hammer to say this word. Giving. <laughs> Giving. All right. <laughs> okay, go. Uh, All right, Mike, uh, this is something people do at Christmas. Argue? No, no, no. <laughs> this is a happy thing, but people do it till it hurts. Oh, eat. <laughs> Okay, Mike, this is better than just getting. Getting away? No, okay, no. You know, they have a, a saying, Christmas is the season for... Lighter sentences. Really? I don't know. Okay, Mike, okay, Mike. You wrap something up and you give it to somebody. What's that called? Selling narcotics. No! And it's almost out of time, Uncle Red. All right. Uh, oh, I know, I know. There's an expression, okay? Love is the gift that keeps on... Requiring medication. <laughs> My cellmate proved that. He was a very giving person. There we go. This is the repair shop part of the show we call If It Ain't Broke, You're Not Trying. <laughs> Joining us today, we got Hap Shaughnessy. What do you got for us there, Hap? Oh, uh, is my Christmas lights red? Oh, boy, uh, is this an untangled job, or is this find that one darn bulb that's burnt out job? Because they're both killers. No, neither. The rat chewed the plug off. <laughs> you don't know how to put a plug on a piece of wire, huh? Well, yeah, but every time I try it, the rat bites me. Ow! Yeah. Oh. Oh. Hey. Come on. Still in there, that's the main problem. <laughs> Jeez, he's really hanging on there. You may have to do without Christmas lights, huh? No, no, can't do that. Gotta hang the lights. I invented them. <laughs> you invented Christmas lights? Yeah. I, I only tried to save my platoon. On Christmas Day, we were surrounded out of ammo, and our sergeant, Sergeant Pepper, <laughs> he wanted to surrender, but we were holed up in a light bulb factory. So I got this idea of stringing a whole lot of bulbs together, you see, and then plugging them in and out real quick, flash, flash, flash. And from a distance, it looked as though that was the flash of rifles firing. Well, I kept flashing the lights, the Germans stayed away. <laughs> And the very next day, General Montgomery decided to give me the Congressional Medal of Honor. Now, now that's incredible, uh -huh. a Canadian soldier getting an American medal from a British general. Mama's in the kitchen.
kitchen, butter in the hog. Dad is in the study, feeding brandy to the dog. dog. Grandma and her boyfriend are sleeping kind of late. Auntie's in the pantry, putting on some weight. Oh, I love Christmas. a great family time, isn't it? Really brings relatives together. What a shame that nobody gets on your nerves faster than your loved ones. <laughs> somebody says the wrong thing or looks at somebody the wrong way. Next thing you know, everybody's going home with an eye socket full of mashed potatoes. <laughs> you know the best way to avoid that? Get yourself a project that gets you out of the house. You know, a handyman's Christmas special. <laughs> How about making a one-horse open sleigh from a 100-horse open K? K car, that is. You know, the, the open sleigh really was the pioneer version of the convertible. So the first step is to get the roof right off the unit. Actually, I did that using my garage door. <laughs> All right, now we're going to put an old-fashioned high uh, open sleigh driver seat into this unit. So what do I got to do is, first of all, get the old seat out of there. <laughs> Looks like some of the floor come up with the seat there. But that, no, that's, no, that's a good thing. That's a good thing, because we can see right down through the floor when we're driving. That's always handy. And you know, if you run over somebody, you get a chance to apologize to them as they go by the hole. We don't actually have any antique sleigh seats, but we do have a lot of tall bar stools. <laughs> the trick is finding an empty one, especially this time of year. So I'm going to stick the stool behind the hole, and I'm going to snug her down there with the handyman's secret weapon duct tape. You know, the K car was never actually built for speed, but even this unit has a few more ponies than we need under the hood for our sleigh. What we want is just to have a one-horse unit, so I think I'm going to have to unharness a few. We want a one-horse, one-cylinder, open sleigh. <laughs> Gosh, I hope I'm using one of the cylinders that still works. Of course, the kids are going to be bugging, you know. Where's the horse? Where's the horse? And rather than make up some dumb, politically correct story about some Christmas horse that goes off to university to avoid a life of manual labor, <laughs> instead of that, we're going to make a horse out of what's left of the roof. Should be a snap to cut a horse shape out of that. Well, this turned out great. Look at this thing. <laughs> oh, baby. Yeah. Oh, man, that's fantastic. <laughs> I'd set the torch a little hotter, I could have cut out two horses. <laughs> All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a groove into the hood of the K car so that I can mount the horse in there good and solid. These are uh, obviously the reins here, which I'm going to use to steer the unit. i got to run through the steering wheel, so when I want to turn, I just pull on the rein and the steering wheel. It won't be a sharp turn, but I'm guessing people will get out of the way. <laughs> All right, now, what I've done is I've cranked the idling way up on her there, so I don't have to go near the, near the gas pedal at all. And I'm going to use a, a riding crop uh, to change gears. Well, it's not a real riding crop. This is a, this is a radio aerial, but it's a power unit. Look at this. <laughs> huh? Is that beautiful? <laughs> Actually, I wanted a real riding crop. I went into the store, I said to the guy, are the crops in? Wouldn't even serve me. <laughs> All right, so, oh, I want to say one other feature I've added to this thing. I uh, added a couple of those fake uh, po polyfoam, polystyrene plastic candy canes. Got them hanging down by the wheels that look like runners, huh? <laughs> of course, now those are just fake runners, you know, because right now we're mainly going for looks, and I bet we get a few. <laughs> so remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. On Donner, on Blitzen, on Aries. Uh. I want to talk to you older guys about telling the truth. The truth about Santa. 
But you know, some naive kid is going to say to you, should I believe in Santa? Well, you got to look him straight in the eye and say, yes, Harold. <laughs> Of course you believe in Santa. What's not to believe? You know, Santa's a pretty average, normal guy. Spends 99% of his time squirreled away in his workshop, <laughs> making stuff that's only good enough to give away. <laughs> I know lots of guys like that. He's got these little helpers that do all the work. We all have those. <laughs> And then every Christmas, he loads up way too many gifts and drives all over Kingdom Come delivering them. That sound familiar to you at all? <laughs> and everywhere he goes, he expects some snacks and a drink. So do I. <laughs> and when it comes to the choice of doing things the easy way or the hard way, he chooses the hard way every time. <laughs> Door versus chimney, need I say more? <laughs> hey, he's just one of us, eh? Plus, he's fat, he's balding, he wears red long underwear. That sounds like half the lodge to me. <laughs> so when a kid asks you if there's a Santa Claus, Say, heck yeah, there's probably a couple in your own family. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. You know what I hate about Christmas time even more than fruitcake? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, I hate fruitcake. I can't, <laughs> just stuck in your teeth, you know, like doing that to like Groundhog Day or something. But a close second, a close second would be like waiting for Christmas Day to come, right? Because I love Christmas and it takes so long! <laughs> like, for instance, I wish like today was tomorrow because then I'd be like one day closer to Christmas. But, you know, it's not gonna happen because I gotta wait for today to end and that's gonna be tomorrow sometime, so I've missed it. <laughs> so what you gotta do is effectively come up with ways to kill time prior to Christmas actually arriving. <laughs> So each year what I do is I create a red and green... <laughs> red and green, I said! I didn't even notice that before! <laughs> That's so cool! I'm, what I do is I make this a, a, re a red and green paper chain reindeer days left wall-mounted calendar. <laughs> and all you have to do is every day that it gets closer to Christmas, you just, you know, tear off a link. Like that, you see? And now you, you've effectively killed like two seconds, right? <laughs> gone, two seconds, where'd it go? I don't know, it's gone. <laughs> so now all I gotta do is wait like 23 hours, 59 minutes and 58 seconds before I can tear off another one, kill some more time. Just tear it right off like that. <laughs> I, I tore off tomorrow's. <laughs> I'm gonna have nothing to do tomorrow! <laughs> You know what? You know what? I could effectively kill time by putting it all back together. You see, that's what I, that's how I'll effectively kill time for the next little while. And you know what's really interesting about all this? Is none of this would even matter if I had a girlfriend. <laughs> I, I do a Christmas countdown thing. It's important to me when Christmas is because the beer stores are closed. <laughs> but uh, I don't like the thing that Harold did, the moose with the links and all that stuff. I'm. More of a handyman than a crafty goof. <laughs> I like the idea of the chain link, so but I say, why don't you use a real chain? <laughs> sure, it maybe it's heavy and it's oily and dirty and so on, but you don't have to make it. <laughs> it's already there. Huh? So you just hang that up on the wall, and then uh, you get your bolt cutter, and uh, every time a day goes by, you just. Um, you just, uh, you just. <laughs> I'm finished having my family. <laughs> All right, well, you get the idea on that. Uh, you know, when you go with a heavier chain, maybe it would be better to just kind of. Let a few days go by. Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> so you let four days go by, then you just cut that link. And then all the days, that's what to do. Just cut, just cut every four days. Or, you know what you could do is just hang it up and wait for all the days to go by. <laughs> then on Christmas morning, first thing you do, take the chain down. That's the handyman way.
Something a little bit special uh, for this show, a Christmas adventure with Billy Abel. How you doing? That's, that's a problem, huh? Oh, he's got the, got the car parked on the snowshoe. Why don't you just uh, move the car? Bill? Just I'll move the car. What you got in no, 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 don't lift. Don't lift that. No, just move. That's easy. Just move it. <laughs> Bill always wants to do things the hard way. <laughs> Good, Bill. Ah! Oh. Oh. All right, uh, what we're out to uh, do actually is to uh, get ourselves a Christmas tree. So, a big one, a big tree for the lodge there. These trees are old. Oh. Uh, and that's what the uh, toboggan's all about. Gonna haul her home there and. Uh... Oh, no, Bill, that, no, that one's. No, that's too, Bill, that's too big. That's 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 too big. We'll never get that tree standing up in the lodge. That, that was... Oh, oh, oh. oh. All right, there, Bill. It's uh, a little bit of crap. Oh! oh. It's gonna be a long day, I think. What's he got? Oh, he's got an axe in his pants. Which I guess is better than having an accident in your pants. He's got, he's got two. Oh my golly, that's not. <laughs> Size matters, right, Bill? Oh, 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 Bill, Bill, oh, 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 so, Bill, uh, you almost killed me. Just thought you should know. <laughs> I accept your apology. Oh, he's got an idea. And so do I. No, no. In front of the cameras. And Jack climbed and climbed while his mother wondered what he'd done with the money. And up he goes to see the giant. <laughs> oh, that's another adventure. There you go, Bill. Right up to the top there. Chuck's getting a little thin at this point. And Bill certainly isn't. There you go. Go your way up there. Hang on, hang on, hang on. And I just rock it, rock it. Maybe I'll snap it off of the trunk or something, Bill. Or, or just, just take Oh, I see. Look at this kid saying, see how you can use your balance to moving the weight and keeping the tree. And uh, I don't think Bill is actually all that balanced no matter what we do. Tree curl right around the boat upside down there. Oh, there's your there's your tree. That won't take long to decorate. Yeah, Bill. Have yourself a great Christmas. Bye bye. Joining me today, we got uh, Edgar Montrose. Merry Christmas, Edgar. So, uh, what do you got for us today? That's right, usually at this time of year. <laughs> well, first off, I have a gift for you, Red. Sure. It's a little something I call a Christmas cracker. Yeah. My own idea. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Edgar, uh, no offense, but you know, lots of people have had crackers. <laughs> yes, but do they use the mercury detonator? <laughs> No, Red, I, I'm here because my snow cannon isn't working. Snow cannon, boy, that's, uh, that sounds cute. How does that, how does that work? Well, normally when you push down here, it sends snow out and sprinkles across the yard. Oh, <laughs> oh gee, thanks, Red, that's a good repair. What did you do? I made a little adjustment, sorry, now. Oh. <laughs> well, by golly, if there's anything I can do to return the favor, Oh, as a matter of fact, yeah, you could. I, I got to decorate the the tree here. I got to decorate the tree, and that's a long job. Could you help me out with that, Edgar? Well, you're in luck, because huh? today I got my howitzer holiday special with me. Howitzer holiday special? That sounds interesting. Boy, this baby can tinsel a tree faster than you can call 911. <laughs> hey. You just load it up with some tin foil. You take aim, and you fire. Yeah, yeah it was fun, wasn't it? Huh? That's, 
that's uh, that's pretty much it for our Christmas special. We hope you enjoyed it, or some of it, or at least didn't get hurt, or didn't get hurt bad, anyway. I also want to remind people that Christmas is a time of, of peace and forgiveness. A, a time to, 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 to forget about all your petty differences with people and, and be kind to those who are hurtful to you all year long. A time to open up your heart and express a, a, an element of hope and, and through a gesture of generosity of spirit. And with that in mind, Oh, go red, I, I've got you a gift. Oh. Oh, well. Thank you, Harold. You're welcome. Appreciate it. It's okay. Wait a minute. I seem to have something here in my pocket. Oh, by golly, it's a, it's a gift of some kind, I think, Harold. I, I wonder who this is for. Huh? <laughs> what does it say on the tag there? No refund without sales slip. No, no. The other side. The other side. What does that say? Oh, to Harold from Uncle Red! There you go. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> My golly, this is... You know what it is? You know what it is? You know what it is? No. It's an electronic organizer. It's really cool. It's like an electric computer, you know? You put all your messages and phone numbers and stuff in there and it electronically reminds you. Oh. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's great, Harold. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome very much. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, Harold. <laughs>